Hello, welcome all of you in the third part of the ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy. In part first, as well as in a part second, we have gone through the basic information of the ultraviolet visible spectroscopy. We have seen the principle as well as the various electronic transitions. In this part, we will discuss the basic terms such as chromophore and oxochrome various shifts of the absorption band such as bathochromic shift hypsochromic shift hyperchromic and hypochromic shift and lastly we will see the effect of conjugation on the position as well as on the intensity of ultraviolet and visible band so let's begin with the basic term that is chromophore and oxochrome the first basic term in the ultraviolet visible spectroscopy it is the chromophore chromophore it is the unsaturated group present in a molecule which absorb the ultraviolet and visible radiation and it causes n2 pi star transition as well as pi 2 pi star transition so this chromophore it is responsible for absorbing the ultraviolet and visible radiation causing n2 pi star transition and pi 2 pi star transition it is the unsaturated group so there is a presence of unsaturation it may be a double bond or a triple bond so it is divided into two types the first type is a chromophore having olefinic bond between two carbon so example is alkene or alkyne so i will write here carbon double bond carbon or carbon triple bond carbon so two carbons they are joined by unsaturated bond that is double bond or a triple bond in this there is a transition of pi to pi star so this type of chromophore causes pi to pi star transition and the example for this pi to pi star transition or the compounds that are showing pi to pi star transitions is first one c6h13 ch double bond ch2 it causes pi to pi star transition and the lambda max that we are getting it is 177 nanometer in the second example there is a carbon triple bond carbon and it causes a uh, pi to pi star transition with lambda max 178 as well as 196 and uh, 225 nanometer the second type of the chromophore it is a olefinic bond with one or more heteroatom the double bond or a triple bond is present but it is in between one or more heteroatom so other than carbon atoms heteroatoms are present in that bond so we have a carbon double bond oxygen carbon double bond nitrogen or carbon triple bond nitrogen or carbon double bond sulfur nitrogen double bond oxygen nitrogen double bond nitrogen this type of bonds they causes a absorption of the ultraviolet as well as visible radiation due to n2 pi star transition and pi 2 pi star transition therefore this is the chromophore having olefinic bond between one or more heteroatoms so the examples are carbonyl azo nitro nitroso cyanide this type of compound they are having a n2 pi star transition and pi 2 pi star transition the first example is azo that is ch3 n double bond n ch3 it causes n2 pi star transition as well as pi 2 pi star transition here we see the n2 pi star transition and the wavelength is that is lambda max 339 nanometer as well as 300 nanometer the second example is c4 h9 n o it is a nitroso compound it is having a wavelength that is 300 nanometer as well as 665 nanometer in this way 
the two types of chromo core chromo force are present that are causing a n to pi star transition as well as pi to pi star if only pi to pi star transition is occurred then the chromo pore should have carbon double bond carbon or carbon triple bond carbon and uh, any compound which is having a chromophore that compound is called as a chromosin so suppose i will write here the example this is the benzene then it is attached to the ch double bond ch2 this is the chromophore and it is attached to the benzene so the overall compound it is called as a chromozine in this way the chromophore absorb ultraviolet and visible radiation and causes n2 pi star as well as pi2 pi star transition and we get a corresponding lambda max values that is wavelength then the second basic term is oxochrome oxochrome is nothing but a saturated group or atoms which are present and they have a non bonding electron or we call it as a lone pair so if this type of group or atoms they are present having non bonded electron that group or atom they are called as a oxochrome they do not causes the absorption of the ultraviolet or visible radiation but they extend the conjugation when it is attached to the chromophore and they shift the longer wavelength to the longer side that is shift of the wavelength is occurs as well as intensity of the band increases so the basic difference between oxochrome and chromophore is that chromophore absorb the radiation whereas the oxochrome they do not absorb the radiation but they causes the shift of wavelength as well as they extend the conjugation and the example of oxochromes are hydroxyl group oxygen is having a lone pair or that is alkoxy group then thiol group then halides cl br amine that is nh2 group this type of group or atoms they are having a lone pair as well as non bonded electron therefore they acts as a oxochrome now see the example in case of benzene if you look the structure benzene has lambda max value that is wavelength it is 254 nanometer but when it is attached to the nh2 so this nh2 causes the extension of the conjugation so these electrons are freely available for the resonance and there is a extension of the conjugation that is conjugation increases as conjugation increases the lambda max values goes on increasing so the aniline has a lambda max value 280 nanometer in this way the oxochrome works in the ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy now we will see the next point that is shift a bathochromic shift hypochromic shift hyperchromic as well as hypsochromic shift the first shift it is the bathochromic shift or it is also called as a red shift the shift of absorption band to the longer wavelength it is called as a bathochromic shift so here you can see that on this side there is a bathochromic shift if this band is shift on the longer wavelength side then it is called as a bathochromic shift or a red shift this shift is observed when oxochrome is attached to the chromosome so this is the chromosome that is nitrobenzene it is having lambda max value 268 but when it is attached to the oh group oh is nothing but the saturated group having a lone pair or non bonding electron on the oxygen and this oxygen it causes a conjugation or extension of the conjugation with this benzene ring as there is a conjugation increases the lambda max value also increases so wavelength goes on increasing from 268 to 318 nanometer therefore it is a bathochromic shift or a red shift so oxochrome when it is attached to the chromosome it causes a red shift then the second is when surrounding medium is changed 
this nitrophenol it is having 318 nanometer lambda max but when it is dissolved in a alkali that is NaOH or KOH then this proton it is eliminated and this oxygen is having a negative charge so the extra electrons are present on the oxygen and it causes again a strong conjugation therefore the compound which is obtained that is a phenoxide ion is having a lambda max greater than 318 nanometer so when surrounding medium is changed this bathochromic shift is observed then opposite to this bathochromic shift it is the hypsochromic shift hypsochromic shift it is also called as a blue shift the shift of absorption band to the shorter wavelength suppose this band it is shifted to this side then it is called as a hypsochromic shift now this uh, hypsochromic shift is observed when surrounding medium is changed now look at the structure here it is the aniline having a lambda max value 280 nanometer but when this aniline is treated with scl then this scl it will protonate the amino group and this amino group is converted into the NH3Cl minus. So there is a protonation. Due to the protonation, the electron which are present on this nitrogen, they are undergoing a acid base reaction. Therefore, they are not available for the resonance. And therefore, a conjugation decreases and the lambda max value goes on decreasing. Suppose this aniline is dissolved in another uh, medium that is base its lambda max value remains as it is but when it is dissolved in acidic medium a protonation occurs that disturbs the conjugation and a lambda max value decreases it is called as a blue shift now the third shift it is hyperchromic shift this hyperchromic shift and hypochromic shift these two are related with the intensity of the absorption band hyper it means that uh, increase in the intensity of absorption band suppose this is the band if the intensity of this band goes on increasing then it is called as a hyperchromic shift this hyperchromic shift is observed with the bathochromic shift when lambda max value increases ultimately the intensity of the absorption band also increases so when oxochrome is attached to the chromosome we get a lambda max value goes on increasing but in addition to this a absorption maxima also increases so benzene is there it is having a lambda max value 254 and here a epsilon max that is the absorption or molar absorptivity it is the 200 so benzene it is having a structure we know that it is having a epsilon max it is 200 but when this benzene is attached to the nh2 group that is and this nh2 group is nothing but the oxochrome and when it attached with the nh2 group the lambda max value increases up to 280 as well as this epsilon max also increases to 1430 in this way hyperchromic shift occurs when oxochrome attached to the chromosome then hypochromic shift the decrease in the intensity of the absorption maximum if the intensity of this band decreases it is called as a hypochromic shift this shift it is observed when there is a change in the geometry due to the groups attached to the compounds biphenyl compound is there it is having a 250 nanometer lambda max and 19000 it is the absorption maxima that is epsilon max but when this biphenyl compound it attached with the methyl group at the second position then the lambda max value goes on decreasing and epsilon max that is uh, absorption maxima also decreases this is the biphenyl and this is a uh, two methyl biphenyl then look at the structure here here a methyl group is attached i will uh, draw with the red color 
this is the methyl group it is attached to the biphenyl then what happens the planarity between these two ring so i will write here a uh, biphenyl this is the biphenyl compound it is the planar one then when methyl group is attached so here on the second position methyl group is attached when this methyl group is attached at the second position this planarity is disturbed and one ring that is suppose this is the ring it will become like this so i will write here uh, so the planarity of this uh, biphenyl structure or geometry of this biphenyl structure goes on decreasing or planarity is disturbed that's why the conjugation is disturbed and therefore lambda max decreases as well as epsilon max decreases in this way the various shifts of the absorption band as well as intensity of the absorption band increases or decreases according to the change in the structure of the compound now we will see the effect of conjugation on the position as well as intensity of the absorption band the effect of conjugation on the position as well as intensity of the ultraviolet and visible band to understand this let us consider the example of ethene butadiene hexatriene and octatetraene the conjugation increases from this ethene up to this octatetraene and due to the increase in conjugation here the pi bonding orbital as well as anti bonding orbital they are increases like this so ethene it is having pi and pi star whereas butadiene it is having pi 1 pi 2 then pi 1 star pi 2 star and like hexatriene and octatriene tetraene they are having a different bonding as well as anti bonding orbitals now what happens when the conjugation increases the energy difference between bonding and anti bonding orbital goes on decreasing how it is uh, drawn here it is the energy difference between these two orbitals that is this one is the bonding orbital this is the anti bonding orbital the energy required for the promotion of the electron from this bonding orbital to anti bonding orbital it is the delta e1 now the electron they are present on this pi 2 orbital and they are shifted to this pi 1 star therefore the energy difference is delta e2 so here these orbitals that is pi pi 1 pi 2 or pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 or pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 pi 4 they are homo that is highly occupied molecular orbitals so i will write here these are the homos and these are a lumo that is lowest unoccupied molecular orbital so electrons are present on this homo and when the molecule absorbs the energy from the ultraviolet and visible radiation the electrons are promoted from this homo to lumo and for this purpose we require the energy here a delta e1 is there delta e2 then in this case a delta e3 and in this case we require delta e4 this amount of the energy now when the conjugation increases this is the double bond uh, conjugation increases the values of energy required for the promotion of electron from homo to lumo decreases so here we get a delta e1 more than delta e2 than e3 and e4 as energy goes on decreasing and we know that the relation is uh, energy is related with the wavelength that is energy is inversely proportional to the wavelength therefore as energies they are goes on decreasing the wavelength which are required here goes on increases therefore in this case the lambda max that is Uh, we say here uh, lambda 4 here lambda 3 then lambda 2 and lambda 1 
these are the lambda max 1 lambda max 2 lambda max 3 and lambda max 4 so here i have written only 1 2 3 4 as the energies goes on decreasing the wavelength goes on increasing because the energy difference goes on decreasing therefore the conjugation increases the wavelength goes on increasing and therefore the absorption band shifts towards a longer wavelength that is called as a bathochromic shift or a red shift so the conjugation causes a red shift i will write here a conjugation causes a red shift and on the intensity it affects and it causes the increase in the intensity of the ultraviolet as well as visible band so in addition to red shift we observe hyperchromic shift so this is the effect of conjugation on the position as well as intensity of the ultraviolet and visible band we observe red shift as well as hyperchromic shift here you can find these are the absorbance and here uh, lambda max that is uh, nanometer wavelength in a nanometer then 200 250 300 and 350 this is the butadiene then it is the hexatrine and it is the octatetrine now for butadiene we get wavelength up to uh, 217 nanometer for hexatrine it is increases and we get a 258 nanometer and for octatetrine it is about a 318 nanometer now the wavelength they are increasing from butadiene up to octatetrine due to the increase in conjugation and for ethane we observed a lambda max below 200 so the the peak or band for ethane is not drawn here i have drawn only butadiene hexatrines and octatetrines so in this way wavelength goes on increasing as well as you can see here these are the band here the intensity also goes on increasing with increase in conjugation now see the typical example in a, our daily life so typical examples are here so i will write i will show you uh, first example it is the beta carotene this structure it is having 11 double bonds uh, you can calculate here and a lambda max value is 415 nanometer it is observed in a carrot so this beta carotene is observed or uh, found in a carrots and the color for this beta carotene is yellow to orange red yellow to orange red now conjugation increases lambda max value also increases lycopene is there it is in a tomato so lambda max value is, is a 474 it is having a red color and here again a conjugation increase from ethene up to the lycopene all the compounds they are showing a pi to pi star transition due to the presence of carbon double bond carbon and its conjugation but now we will see the compounds which are having a conjugation of carbon double bond carbon with a carbonyl compound thiocarbonyl or azo group so in this case we have the structure like this carbon double bond carbon it is attached to the carbon double bond oxygen carbon double bond carbon it is attached to the carbon double bond nitrogen or carbon double bond sulfur or nitrogen double bond nitrogen in this case heteroatoms are present and they causes n to pi star transition and they also shift the absorption band to the longer wavelength as well as intensity of the band increases so the specific example here it is the ch3 ch double bond ch this ch double bond ch it is having n value that is 127 cho it is the polyene aldehyde 
when we change this value that is n from 1 to 7 we got a different structure from first to seven here the number of conjugation increases that is double bond increases and due to this here you can see a lambda max values increases from 217 up to 415 270 312 343 370 393 due to the increase in conjugation and epsilon max value that is absorption maxima is also increases from 15650 up to 63000 in this way when conjugation increases pi 2 pi star transition as well as n2 pi star transition we observed and that see the absorption band to the longer wavelength as well as intensity increases so it means that conjugation increases red shift and hyperchromic shifts are observed in a ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy this is all about the basic terms in ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy and effect of conjugation in the next video we will see the calculation of lambda max by woodward fisher rule